Hello, you legendary people. Welcome to or welcome back to Lauren's Legends. Today's story, who uh, this is a crazy one about Suzanne Walters, who happens to be one of the most bad ass women in history. Uh, this is an insane story of how she survived her hitman. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Suzanne was born in 1955 to parents that really were not cut out to be parents. Her father was an Air Force cook and was gone a lot. Her mother was a homemaker that didn't really do much making of the home, if you know what I mean. As a little girl, she grew up hearing constant fighting, and when she was eight, they finally divorced. Once they divorced, nothing really got better. There was still constant fighting, but now these were with the multiple step-parents that came in and out of her life. And she was constantly moved around, and I mean constantly, in multiple homes. She was moved from Colorado to Nevada to Arizona and to California. As soon as she was old enough to go out on her own, she picked up and moved herself to Portland, Oregon. Once she got settled and she made friends, she vividly remembered a friend asking her what she thought of marriage and kids and everything. She replied that she never had an example. Her parents couldn't teach her what marriage was as much as they could teach her how to fly. As the years went on, Suzanne's mother was trying to meddle in her daughter's life because she believed that it was time for her to get a husband. In 1988, her mom actually placed an ad in the newspaper for her. Mike Kuhnhausen actually replied and they were set up on a blind date. Surprisingly, Suzanne became smitten very quickly with Mike. She loved his positive attitude, his enjoying being outdoors, and how he wanted to live life to the fullest. They actually got married within a year of meeting. Throughout the years, Suzanne had always been a rock star and was going really high up in nursing. She worked in the emergency room and that is where she wanted to stay. She loved the fast pace and the emergencies that she was able to help people and save lives. Through the years and through all of her experiences, she had all kinds of manners of patience. Several of these patients would come in withdrawing from substances and they would be thrashing around and she would have to hold them down to administer the IVs as rough as that could be. And she was only 5'4". Due to this being such a common occurrence in emergency rooms, nurses were required to take several self-defense courses. These courses were somewhat limited, but they did do a lot in teaching people how to get out of being put in a chokehold or how to get closer to someone if they were charging at you because they wouldn't be able to gain as much force. I mean, think about it. If someone is going to hit you and you get closer to them, they can't go as far forward and deliver as much force as they would be if it's like me. (laughs) Through all the experiences that Suzanne was continuously having every shift she worked, I mean, this woman would be able to know that when someone was coming in of a heart attack, she could crack open their chest and reach in and physically pump their heart to keep them alive until they could get them on a machine. She continued to grow in her field and just be a master of everything that she put her mind to. But Mike was not. Mike was not a good worker and he struggled to keep down any job that he got. Mike was really becoming the unhappy shell of the man that she fell in love with, and it was as if every single thing just made him even angrier. Susan worked so hard, and for years she saved and she saved and she saved up, and she was able to buy them a beautiful blue little cottage just for the two of them. This was supposed to be a new beginning for them, a happy place, a place to start over Unfortunately, Mike just continued to spiral into his darkness, and then he began gambling. He lost yet another job, and at this time, the only job that he could find was a janitorial supervisor at a fantasy adult store. Their home life became completely toxic, 
And even though Suzanne loved him, she couldn't continue to handle him gambling all of her hard-earned money that she had saved up away, him constantly chain-smoking that was not only, you know, she didn't want that in the house, but that's expensive too. And then he started being upset with her every single time that she went out with friends. Even if she went out for a simple brunch with the girls, he would be complaining about every single penny that she spent. She finally stood up for herself and she told him that she was done with the bitter fighting, the micromanaging, and that he needed to leave. As soon as he moved out though, it did hurt her. She missed him. Even though he was a grumpy man at this point, she still missed him and she knew that he had nowhere else to go, but she had, this was her way of trying to really put her foot down and get him to change. She was hoping that this would wake him up and make him realize that their 18 years of marriage was worth fighting for, but she couldn't do it alone and she needed him to fight for it himself too. On September 9th, 2006, Suzanne finally clocked out of her day shift. It had been a long, grueling one, but it was over. She was excited. Things had been calmer and Mike had decided that he wanted to work on the relationship as well. They had began communicating again and she trusted him enough to be able to ask him if he could watch her cats for her. She was treating herself and she was going to the salon to get her hair dyed. When she arrived, she had to wait for a while. So as you do, she went in, she sat at the chair and she picked up a magazine and started flipping through it. And she read a quote that really stuck with her. The quote said, I will not live an unlived life. I will not live in fear of everything. She reread that quote a few times. There had been so many times in her life that fear had just paralyzed her. She was a rock star, but there was like simple things like today, smiling to herself, she was going to choose a new hair color. And when it was her time, she picked a color of brown that she had never tried out before. When it was done, she loved the new color. She was so happy she chose it. And she went home. She's pulling in the driveway. She went, she checked her mail. She's flipping through. She sees bills. She rolls her eyes and she just throws her mail on the table. She then went over to the yelling alarm and turned it off, punching in her anniversary date. She still could not have brought herself to change that even with Mike out of the house. Neither had she considered changing the locks. She then turned and saw a note from Mike. It read, haven't been sleeping well, had to get away for a few days, went to the beach alone, love Mike. She just simply rolled her eyes so he wouldn't be helping her with the cats. Hmm. As she set the note down, she was puzzled. The house was strangely dark. She always opened up her curtains in the morning to allow the sunlights in, and her cats liked to sit on the porch and look out the window. She took a few steps in the room towards the curtains, and then suddenly a five foot nine, 190 pound man steps out from behind the curtains holding a hammer wearing khakis and wearing yellow gloves coming straight for her. This 5'4", slightly overweight woman, those are her words, not mine, by the way, bad knees, been on her feet all day, could have turned and run from the man coming at her with a hammer like most people would, maybe me before hearing the story, but all of her 30 years of training in the ER as a nurse just flooded through her. As she saw him lift the hammer to strike her, she rushed at him with all of her force, slamming her body into him as hard as she could. This unsteadied his footing, and even though he was able to land a blow to her head, she wasn't knocked out and she really wasn't phased by it. Again, when she had gotten that close to him, he wasn't able to fully extend and hit her, so she didn't get the full force. She continued to slam herself into him and the arm that was holding the hammer as hard as she could, all the while screaming, who are you? What do you want? She was giving it all of her might, and even though he wasn't budging, 
He was clearly surprised by her tenacity. While she's screaming her head off at him, he simply muttered, you are strong. When she heard those words, they washed all over her. Something in her snapped and she realized he was not there for anything else but to kill her. With everything in her, she slammed herself against him as hard as she possibly could. And she was able to grip the hammer out of his hand. And she wailed back with a claw in and she got three or four blows right onto his head. Now, since her weight had shifted and his arm was free, he was able to grab the hammer back from him. But as soon as he did, she put her hand right on his throat. He began to slowly drop down to the ground when his air was cut off and she was still screaming, please tell me who you are, who sent you, why are you here? Just tell me and I'll call you an ambulance. When she saw him turning blue, no matter the reason he was there, she panicked. She had been saving people for 30 years. She couldn't take a life with her own hands and she let go. She jumped to her feet as fast as she could and she turned to book it out of the house, but he grabbed her ankle and yanked her down. And as she fell, he turned around and he began hitting her straight in the face. When he stopped hitting her only to turn and grab the hammer, every little bit of empathy that she had left in her was gone. If she did not act right now, she knew that she would never get a chance to again. So as he's reaching, this woman, I love her, as he's reaching, she reaches up and bites him in the upper part of his leg towards his growing as hard as she can. She bit him so hard, she bit through the khaki fabric of his pants. Her thought process was genius. She was thinking, if I bite him and I die, at least my teeth marks will be there and I can leave some DNA so that way the police will be able to match us together. But this intense pain made him jump back and fall some. And as soon as he did, she jumped, she threw her leg over him and jumped back on top of him. She was on top of him, but trying to reach around and like rifle through his pockets. Her thought process was if she could get his wallet, she could throw it behind her dresser. So that way, again, if something did happen to her, that the cops would be able to find his ID and match him again to her. But as hard as she tried, she could not get to his back pocket that he was laying on and kind of like moving around where she was reaching. Now, as this was going on, he was able to move his body out a little bit and sit somewhat up. And she just instinctively reached around and put him in a headlock as tight as she could. When she had him like this, she asked him one final time, who are you? Tell me, please, I will call you an ambulance. He only growled back to her and continued to struggle against her and tried to get up again. And she knew this was it. And she applied all of her strength until he wasn't moving anymore. Slowly, she released him and he slumped over to the floor. She stood up and she picked up the hammer and she walked out of her house calmly to her neighbor's house beside her. Her neighbor opened the door to see a bloody and bruised Susan standing out there holding a hammer. She obviously asked her what was going on. Suzanne replied, a man just tried to attack me in my house. I think I killed him. Can you please call 911? So the neighbor turned immediately right around and went and called 911 and let her in. I probably would too. When the police did arrive, they did find the man passed away where she had left him and they were able to surmise that this entire crazy situation and brawl that had happened had lasted a whopping 14 minutes. Have you ever wrestled around with someone? I'm not talking like even a real fight. 
that is a long time. Think about how much energy that took to fight for your life for 14 minutes. Wow. They were able to get to his wallet and pull out his ID. And they found out that he was 59-year-old Edward Halfy. Halfy. I heard a lot of people pronounce it both ways. Suzanne had been able to fight off a Vietnam veteran. The police then noticed that there was no sign of a break-in and that he had been able to turn off and reset the alarm. They then found his book bag and in his book bag was his daily planner and they obviously opened it up. And what do you know, inside of it, on that day's date, there was a note that was highlighted that said, call Mike. And it had Mike's new cell phone number in it. Hmm. So they obviously remove his body. He goes, they do an autopsy. And when the autopsy came back, y'all, they, this guy had a almost lethal dosage of cocaine in his system. So Suzanne not only fought off a man that was much bigger than her and raged out of his mind with a hammer, she fought off a veteran and she fought off a drug crazed maniac. I mean, I I can't like props to her, seriously. While investigating, the police found out that Mike had hired Edward at the fantasy video shop as a janitor. And then shortly after Mike had lost his job. Surprise. He, of course, had not told Susan that he had lost yet another job. And when she threw him out of the house, he went to Edward and offered him $50,000 to get rid of her. You see, if Susan passed away, Her house was worth $300,000 and the house would go to Mike. Now, when Mike was hiring Edward, he had run his background check and everything. And he had found out that he was just released from prison after serving nine years for hiring a hitman to kill his ex-girlfriend. Hmm. Mike was arrested and he was sentenced to seven years in prison. And in a funny twist of karma, Mike got prostate cancer when he was incarcerated and he passed away three months before his release date. Now, something that I found was really interesting. I listened to Suzanne. Um, She has several interviews out there. They're all over the internet. You can find them. And she was talking about one of the things that affected her most after all this was she received a letter from Edward Halfie's, Halfie's aunt after all this happened and some time had passed that had thanked her and let her know that they don't blame her. They knew that she had to do what she had to do and they hold no ill will towards her. And they said, thank you for what you do did because you saved others from having to go through what you went through. That's kind of crazy when the family knows that he's that bad. After what she went through, It was some intense trauma and she had to really rebuild herself uh, from not being scared of everything. And that quote that she read in that magazine before this happened is something that still sticks with her to this day. And she repeats it to herself. She quickly sold that house. It had just too much bad stuff to it. And she bought another one and painstakingly took out the driveway and made them put down a full gravel driveway so that way she could hear anybody that was walking up to her house, any sound outside. It was amplified. Uh, She also will not to this day stand in doorways with her back to it. So she's still dealing with some PTSD, but she's come a long way. And every single time that someone calls her a hero, which I'm sorry, girl, but you're kind of a hero in my eyes. um, But for the reason that you want, Uh, She cringes because she never, ever wanted to be considered a hero because she took someone's life. She wanted to be considered a hero for the 30 years of saving people's life that she was able to accomplish. And those are the incredible things that 
she she reminds herself on a daily basis that helps her get through her trauma. Whew. So that is the story of how a woman got attacked by a hitman and she fought back and won in the end. And I really think that everybody, myself included, should take some sort of um, martial arts or protecting classes. I've done a couple of little things and I know some moves, uh, but I would really like to learn a lot more because you never know what's going to happen in life. Uh, please let me know what you thought about her story in the comment section down below. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. I am trying to grow here and keep bringing you new content. So if there is a story that you would like me to do, please let me know that as well. Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you next time.